Today at Michael's, I saw that they had Ranger inks. Now, my Michael's isn't really great about carrying a variety of scrapbooking things. Um, you know, if their paper selection is good, that's about all you can hope for. But they started carrying Ranger things. And um, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of the Ranger brand or the Tim Holtz brand as an artist. But I was interested in their alcohol inks and how their alcohol inks compared to Copic's alcohol inks, which is pretty much the only other alcohol inks I currently have in my studio. So I picked up this three pack um, for about $10. It was like $9.99. I didn't have any coupons. I know I'm the worst Michael shopper. Um, and these are, I wanna say they're brights because they're sorted into families like that. And I wanted colors that I didn't own a Copic analog in the various inks. Now, various inks are about seven to eight dollars. If you can get them in store, you're probably gonna pay less. I'm stuck with buying mine from Amazon, so they can get kind of pricey. Um, they have, I'm trying to find it, unopened, they have like 25 milliliters of ink inside them. So it can refill your Copic marker multiple times. Um, they can also be dropped out of the container because they have that little dropper spout. Tim Holtz inks is 0.5 fluid ounces, so it's 15 milliliters. So it's about 10 milliliters less than the Copic. And they also have little droppers. Their dropper is much finer than the um, alcohol marker, I mean the various inks eyedroppers and these are not necessarily intended to be a refill these are intended to be used on their own um there's a few techniques online on youtube showing how to do them if you guys check out tim holtz's channel and i guess i can link that um he demonstrates a few ways and i'm going to try experimenting with some of those in my own studio to see if it works for me um the colors i have are citrus watermelon and sailboat blue and they're they, from the package at least they seem like they're very bright colors um i'm gonna grab a scrap of paper and uh i guess we can do some swatching of them all right this is a white piece of nina cardstock it might even be solar white which is very popular among crafters and stampers um i didn't check <laughs> i tend to be not all that picky about my cardstock so we're gonna drop some of this watermelon. Whoa, it like, I didn't even have to squeeze. It just like went straight out. So that's a very vibrant red. The alcohol smell isn't particularly overwhelming. It seems a little more saturated than um, a lot of the reds in Copic. Citrus is a nice um, yellow green. It's, um, so watermelon is about the color on the bottle. Citrus is a fair bit darker, but it seems to be drying lighter. And last is sailboat blue. Oh, and that's like a really nice blue. Again though, kind of darker than what's on the bottle. And it looks like it's a sky blue. Now, um, you can refill empty Copics with these, like, I mean entirely empty. Copics if uh, Ranger has a color that you like and uh, if you see them on sale I mean they're alcohol inks vibrant colors I am getting a little bit of like dye chromatography right there and on the edges in fact I'll zoom in so we can look at this together hopefully whoa sorry there we go so you can see where the color isn't as intense. And you can also see where there's like a ring in there. But all in all, um, I'm so far pretty excited about these inks. They're pretty cool. Um, he seems to offer colors that are a little bit different from what I currently own in Copic especially in various inks. So I'll probably be augmenting my Copic collection with some Ranger alcohol inks 
when I come across them, especially for some of the techniques I want to try out for this blog. So I hope you guys found that little overview helpful. Um, especially if you're artists and you've like sort of heard of Ranger products, uh, sort of heard of um, Adirondack inks and um, you wanted to know how they compared to Copic, you wanted to know... Um, Sorry, I was actually grabbing a colorless blender. This is Copic brand. Cause I was just thinking, if you guys really are interested, then it would be really useful if I did some demonstration. So I'm applying colorless blender on top of citrus on my cardstock. And as you can see, it does react to the colorless blender. Let's try watermelon. Watermelon also reacts, and sailboat. Yup, all three of them react pretty well to Copic um, Colorless Blender. Although you will see that color chromatography I had mentioned with the dye, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think the, the effect is interesting. Now I have a bottle of isopropyl alcohol and a spray mister. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray my dots with that and see how they react as well. Now in the past, I have put um, Copic various inks in little spray bottles like this. And this is a uh, BG with three zeros after it. It's kind of like a, oh, I was off screen when I did that, I'm a jerk. It's kind of like a poor man's uh, airbrush system. Think of it that way. And you could probably do the same with um, the Ranger inks. This is, let's see, RV91. I'm gonna make sure I mark my bottles. And so we've got some liquid pooled on there and I'm gonna be a jerk and I'm gonna drop the Ranger ink into it and see how that goes. Mostly I just wanted to see if they would kind of mix together and it looks like it's keeping to itself. Um, maybe the Ranger ink is a little bit thicker than the um, Copic Various inks. I did use two very light colors though. Um, if they were the same density, they would mix. And that doesn't seem to be the case. It also seems like, well, it does seem like they're evaporating at the same speed. I wonder Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so the first ingredient on these, on the Ranger inks, is actually ethanol. So that means they use the same kind of alcohol that the pigment inks, I mean the pigment markers, Winsor Newton's new pigment markers use. The Then there's propylene and glycol. Now, um, monomethyl eth ether, ether, oh my gosh. And then um, third on there is, is a propanol and then it switches to French. I didn't really think I would be able to find um, like a breakdown of dyes versus uh, solvent, but it's interesting that ethanol is the first ingredient on there. And if I can find my pigment markers, I can show you guys whether or not they're reactive to the pigment marker blender. So this is the reason I bought um, some Ranger inks because I wanted to make a, uh, I saw this demonstrated actually on a Ranger like how to video. And what you can do is you can make like a palette of your alcohol inks and the inks will evaporate, but you can um, sort of reconstitute them if you're using like a colorless blender marker. And I actually thought that was really neat and it's very different from how I currently render. So I was excited about um, that concept. So I wanted to get some colors I don't currently own to sort of test it out. Have to let that dry first and it kind of goes down thick. That might be the glycol. So first we've got the colorless blender. 
and it's pretty much dry. So we're gonna go chisel nib. And it reacts to the colorless blender and that the colorless blender pushes it back, but it doesn't necessarily um, blend super well with it. Now we've got the white. My white's a little bit dirty. Just clean that up. And the white doesn't really budge. There we go. Takes a little bit of mixing and scrubbing to get it going. And look, that's really an interesting effect. Um, dripping drops of alcohol ink into still damp, misted paper. And that paper was misted with um, Copic various inks. So I'm applying my pigment mark colorless blender kind of liberally over both the various ink which is Copic and the Ranger ink and it's having about the same amount like the same effect so as you can see where I dripped it onto the paper it's saturated all the way through so there is when you're using these straight from the bottle which is in a way how they're designed to be used there is zero subtlety so I hope you guys, as I said before, I hope you guys, especially the artists out there who are curious about these inks, but aren't necessarily willing to make the investment or not sure if they have a place in their studio. I hope that answered some of your questions. Um, as I amass a larger collection of these inks, I'll let you know more what I think about them, but they seem to work uh, the same way that Copic various inks do. And um, I could see them working in an empty Copic marker. I'll have to buy one and fill it and find out before I can give you guys a definitive. I'm Becca Hilburn. Uh, I hope you guys have a great day. If you like this video, please remember to hit like. Um, and I recommend you subscribe to my channel for more content like this. So I'll see you guys later. Bye.